we ground on the back of the pulley that we're going to use just so that we didn't do any damage to the alternator in the process. This is a solid hunk of steel, so don't be afraid to grind a little bit on it. All you'll need to do is just grind not even a millimeter off of this to get it to clear. And I use a sanding wheel, not a stone wheel, so it gives it a better, smoother finish. It doesn't quite cut, quite cut so rough like the uh, stone wheel would. And uh, our clearance is fine now. Second thing you're going to want to do is after you've changed the pulleys, is to take your stator wire, stator, and then your other stator wire from your regulator and basically cross the two. And then you have your battery terminal wire for the regulator and then your remote turn on wire. So basically, like that. So pretty much here's the harness for the old alternator. That's where it hooks up to the alternator and stuff right there. And then they have their conjunction here of wires that all hook together. And uh, it goes all into the, uh, or not all of it, but goes and connects to the voltage regulator plug-in. And then you have these two wires here. There you've got your remote wire, and you got a positive wire which goes into the uh, dash. And then there's also another wire up here that goes off into the front end of the truck or something, off into the dash or something. And it's a yellowish wire with a greenish uh, tint to it. So pretty much what you're going to do, and you're also going to have, if you're like me, you have a tachometer, you're going to have that in there, so don't cut that. But uh, pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to take that yellow wire, find it, Sorry, get you out of frame here, make the video all crappy. Get both of those wires at the same time. Cut that one. It's a heavier gauge wire, that one. And you'll have to unwind those and then track the green wire from that plug in to the regulator and cut it right at the thing. Back up a little bit. There we go. And now, we should be able to take the alternator wiring harness. Got another wire here. Another wire I'll have to trace back. This little red one hooks up into there. Pretty much, once you get unstuck from everything, you just pull out like that. So you should have the remote wire here, and then we're going to have a, another a, a positive wire, a positive wire, and a positive wire. Three of them right there. So I'm just going to hook those all up to a positive and uh, leave them at that. And then we'll hook this one to the remote wire for the alternator and be all good. So there's the two positive wires um, that are at the alternator with ends on them soldered up. Follow them down here and then there was another positive wire that was uh, in conjunction with the main wire coming off the alternator so I just uh, used one of these little things that I've never used before and, and cross those two and then you have your remote wire which we'll get ready when we put in the alternator but uh, I'm pretty much leaving everything that was positive that goes into the rest of the truck I'm leaving together this video is going to turn out crap here I was wanting to make it all professional and stuff but I can't because now that the computer's down I'm kind of flying blind and stuff here so I'm just kind of going by memory and uh, I'm just making everything that was positive and went into the rest of the truck remain positive. And uh, once we start the truck and if we find problems, then we'll show what the problems were and fix them. So that's about it for the, for the wiring harness, just the remote wire and we're set. Now as you can see, this alternator is different than the one I was kind of showing you in the other 
portions of this video because the newer alternator um, had some problems already before we even got to install it. So I went to a junkyard and got this one and as you can see took it apart, um, did my own personal touches as I always like to do and it definitely doesn't look like it belongs in this truck. But anyways, as you can see, it fits just like the original alternator does. Once you grind a little bit off of the casing of the alternator and a little bit off of the, more so the casing of the alternator, you don't have to grind the pulley, but because uh, the casing has little bumps and ridges on it that won't go away by themselves. So that's what you have to do. And uh, as you can see, it all fits together right. Got our big one out wire that will put a fuse right there when we get the fuse in. And then we'll hook the wire straight to the positive side of the battery. We'll change this to a different color. And two more wires. This one going to a battery positive. And then this green one with the red line going to that green one, green wire on that plug I was telling you about. And we'll put a negative one out wire right here on the casing because the paint's cleared here. Got a nut right there. This bolt I purposely made, we got a longer one to do, and then we'll hook to the negative side of the battery. You will have to change this, you will have to get a bolt to fit this side of the alternator, just to let you know the normal bolt won't fit. So, But, uh, yep, a couple days we'll uh, get, this, get this going. Also, another thing, you're going to want to connect all these wires up especially this big bad boy here before you actually put it in the truck because as you can see the fuel filter bracket is right behind it and you, <laughs> you're gonna have a hell of a time getting that wire in there if you don't put it in beforehand so don't forget to put it in there or else you have to take the alternator back out and it'll just become a huge pain in the butt so we have the uh, yellow wire wire to positive wire to the constant positive side of the relay and then the green wire wired into the other green wire for the voltmeter on the uh, truck which is the indicator to tell the alternator to turn on and uh, it's all wired up ready to go just need a fuse and and uh, hook this side um, to the battery and then we'll be done but it's as far as the harness itself is ready to go <coughs> This is a drawing of the normal wiring harness uh, set up for a Ford 3G alternator anyway. <laughs> you just, uh, you got AS, ASI on the uh, regulator on the back, and as you can see, you just cross S to S, and then yellow goes to positive side of relay, and then the green goes to dash slash voltmeter, and then positive with a fuse go into the thing there and then of course that's the relay that goes to starter which I just showed you is all hooked up that way you have to use a minimum of a six gauge positive wire if you want it to work right um, if you're going to do sound system stuff um, then use the one out wire can't go wrong with that so but that's the basic thing as you can see you can almost make if you can make this alternator fit you can almost make this alternator work um, on pretty much any rig so really cool alternator and we'll get a starter here in a couple weeks and start it that's what you want right there ladies and gentlemen almost 15 volts so here's the final product you know got your one knot positive wire, one knot negative wire um, grounded to the back of the casing here because uh, there's no paint back there and uh, negative going here and then positive going here I know that should be red instead of black and yeah almost 15 volts at the battery and uh, pretty much no voltage drop with all the heaters and lights and everything going on so that's what it's good for. 3G alternator puts out a lot more power and a lot more reliable power than the Ford 1G alternator.